Okay. Okay. Uh, let's get started. Welcome to the Town of Hopkinton Planning Board meeting for Monday, May 23rd, 2016. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking HCAM for uh, taping the uh, and broadcasting the uh, meeting today. We have two members absent today. Uh, so that tape will be watched by at least two people, maybe even a, a few more folks. I'd uh, uh, like to welcome our three new members to the board uh, and Brian Karp back uh, through the process, the election process and uh, the appointment process last week. So uh, Vincent, Dave, and uh, Cliff, yes, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, before we get going with the agenda, I had uh, Kobe pass out a uh, letter to Claire Wright from the Planning Board thanking her for her three terms of service on the Planning Board and also as a member of the Design Review Board. Uh, we're really happy for all the hard work that she put in for at least 15 years and uh, this is just a letter to, uh, to thank her for that and congratulate her on her recent uh, election to the Board of Selectmen. Entertain a motion to uh, send the letter. Second. So moved. So moved. Sorry. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, tonight we were talking about uh, board reorganization. We'll have the public hearing on the uh, solar panel on 201 Hayden Row, and we will restart the Legacy Farms uh, North uh, uh, public hearings. Uh, so, for the board reorganization, we are missing two members tonight, and I don't know whether we should. We typically do this at the first meeting after the election. But let me first ask, is everyone that's here now going to make next meeting, which is June 13th? June 13th. Yep. Yes. yes. So I think we might have a full board on the 13th. So I would propose that we put off the re-election of or reorganization of the board until the 13th and let all nine members make that decision. Uh, if that's agreeable. Agreeable. I think that it's, a, it's, it's in the agenda. Um, I don't know if anyone has a specific role they might want or, or not want, but um, you know, it's, we met last week to get new members, and it's on our agenda. We should, we should meet that requirement. I, we, I, I can go either way as far as it, but I just was a courtesy of letting everyone vote. I thought was maybe more important than voting it tonight. If that's my opinion. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, def defer the board reorganization until our next, the beginning of our next meeting. And if that doesn't fail, then we'll do it tonight. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstain? Okay, so we're, we're going to put that off uh, on a six to one vote uh, till next next meeting. So continuing on, um, let's see, it is now 6.35, so let's get the folks, 7 to 7.35, I'm sorry, and let's uh, open the public hearing for 201 Hayden Row. This is a commercial solar photovoltaic special permit application and stormwater management permit application, uh, select energy development. Uh, this is a proposed 311 kilowatt uh, commercial solar power installation on approximately 3.05 acres. Okay, so who's all going to present today? Hi, my name is Joe Marquardt. Good evening to the members. Joined by uh, Miguel Lanera of Select uh, Energy Development. Okay, uh, just before you get going, we put together an outline today, and make sure Joe has got a set. Uh, we're going to try to kind of use a similar outline like 
we do for most of our reviews and uh, just to kind of go through things. Jim, can I get another one? Uh, I all done? All, all right. Yeah, we'll share. We'll share. I'll share. Um, so basically, from the outline, uh, why don't we do a kind of a project introduction and an overall review with uh, by the applicant? Okay. okay. You don't mind, I'll use the, uh, the board easier for me to point than it is to describe. Um, this site that uh, Select uh, Energy Development would like you to consider <coughs> is 201 Hayden Row Street. Uh, there's an existing home here at 201. Um, we're on the south end up near the intersection with Granite Street. Uh, some of the members may recall that this parcel here, the 3.05 acres, was originally part of a larger tract that was involved with the Hayden Woods Garden Department, Davenport Lane, the condominium project up at the end of Hayden Row. is off-site just here at the edge of the page to help you get some kind of reference as to where we are. Um, what we have is uh, 201 which is currently under construction. Before the sale of that property, the final approval of Davenport Lane, a 3.05 acre parcel was cut out of that 25 odd acres. That is the bounds of the parcel we'd like you to consider this evening. Um, it's uh, got the existing home under construction. It's uh, now a foundation framing. Our bird is about to start shortly. This was an is generally a residential use but has kind of a historic past. There were um, some agricultural uses in this back area. Um, the Valente sold vegetables. Um, a local landscaper rented the parcel to plant uh, landscape stock in the 60s and 70s. So it's kind of got a mixed use in its past. You can see here the areas of uh, the tree canopy. That the majority of this site through the center is um, a grass condition in poor shape and up here at the front are what you'd expect with a residential um, home. There are lawns, there's a driveway, there's a gravel drive that accesses this uh, right here at, at the south corner. But it generally um, was a residential use. The land in the back has fallen out of use. Uh, not as much in the landscape and um, crop growing <coughs> as it has been in, in the past. Um, all our, um, our site um, flows in a northwesterly to southeasterly direction, very gently sloping in this direction here. At the easterly side is an existing vegetated wetlands highlighted um, by Ecotech um, and has been subject of reviews by the Conservation Commission as far back as 09 associated uh, <coughs> with the, the Davenport Lane project. <coughs> there are no rare species, no historical <coughs> artifacts or historical uses of, of any kind associated um, with that parcel. What we are proposing we'd like you to consider is the construction of uh, as Ken mentioned a moment, or Chairman mentioned a moment ago, 300 kilowatt, 311 kilowatt um, like, uh, electricity generation uh, facility. The, uh, the bounds of the site are still the same. Hayden Row is out here. The wetlands in Davenport is to the easterly edge. The center area is where our focus will be. About 1.3 acres of the three acre site will be associated with the placement of the arrays which I've highlighted here in red. We are in the RB zone district, and as such, we've got uh, front, side, and rear yard setbacks, 50, 25, and 20, respectively. Our arrays exceed all those requirements, so we are further from the property line boundaries than we need to be. The, um, the work associated with constructing the arrays will match up nicely with the grades that we have we don't anticipate changing any of these flows. What flows now, northwesterly, southeasterly, pre-construction will be the same post-construction. The changes we have contemplated uh, 
are associated with the construction of the arrays and handling of the stormwater. So there are several trees in here on the westerly side, along the southerly side, though, that are in direct conflict with the array location and then in conflict with the operation, the effective operation of those arrays. The rest of the work that we propose is to mitigate those stormwater impacts. So we've got grass whales that lead to a detention basin down here in the southeast corner and along that side here. But very little in the way of changes. It's a flat site. Uh, there is not a, a dramatic need for cuts and fills, and our site, our designs uh, don't incorporate any of those. We anticipate retaining all this vegetation to the north and to the east. There's no need for us to do the tree clearing. This, quite frankly, is an area that's jurisdictional to the Local Conservation Commission and will allow um, a great deal of, of good to happen in that location. There will be some filtering of storm water. There will be habitat for plant and animal life that will be retained. So in abiding by their regulations, we see a lot of benefits to our project as well. But we are removing uh, the trees here in the central location along the southerly boundary line to the property line, the field stone wall through here. There are a couple of trees, one has fallen, a couple in the back here that will be removed as well for the function of those arrays. So what we have um, proposed to offset and mitigate those impacts is a line of evergreen trees in this location and along this other abutter to the northwest of that location there. Uh, 30 trees by my count, uh, proposed seven foot tall, eight foot on center. The species is up for negotiation. We are going to utilize the existing curb cut in order to fit with the designs for the home that's under construction <coughs> and to eliminate the need for change in that curb cut. Folks, get used to that view shed along Hayden Road. It's not our intention to change that anyway. We will bring our driveway into the facility and provide access and a turnaround at this location here. We're generally 20 foot wide and we get an awful lot of driveway by the time we provide some turning radiuses um, for fire and, and uh, police for safety vehicles. The um, project, the 1.3 acres, will be in, enclosed in a black vinyl chain link fence, six foot high for security and safety reasons with a gate here at this location of the driveway. The uh, fencing, we've, we've attempted to achieve the requirement of uh, the bylaw and that the fencing maintain that minimum offset to the boundary line and we do it for the majority of the fencing except for a short section right in here along the southerly side. In order to utilize that curb cut, provide some separation to that home our driveway ends up in this location, and our fencing is 10 foot off the boundary line instead of the 25. We would hope that the board would consider that waiver, given the fact that we're trying to maintain that existing curb cut. As I, as I went through the regulation, um, trying to gauge the impacts from our project, um, we feel that the arrays are a benign use. We um, have no buildings or facilities other than those associated with the arrays. So the arrays, um, concrete pads for the transformers and underground utilities, there are no buildings, there's no maintenance shack, um, there's nothing associated with those arrays that we need to add. Um, in addition to them, there is no site lighting proposed. Uh, the, there will be some signage on the fencing, but uh, no other impacts that, that we think will uh, be of concern to the neighbors. Um, and if, as such, we mitigate the impacts we did uh, feel, feel that we were, we were instituting because of the designs with our proposed plantings at the northwest and the south, southwest corners. The, um, in keeping with the spirit of the, the bylaw, a vegetative clearing, as I mentioned before, does not happen on the north side, does not happen on the east side, is here along the, the south and west sides. It's for the effective operation of those panels. You know, we can get as much sunlight to those panels as possible. We have um, 
included in our designs and our calculations and on the, the plans, both construction era uh, controls for um, the inspection and construction of elements of the stormwater system and the arrays, and a long-term operation and maintenance plan to ensure the viability of the facility. There'll be uh, set schedules for clearing of the uh, stormwater controls in and around the panels, keep the, the grass low, uh, those sorts of things, make sure that the trees are healthy and providing the screen that we're intending. Um, and all that is under the project designs. We think that this, that this use, this clean alternative energy, is a great use for this spot. And we think that this design meets all your approval criteria. This uh, summary uh, in the submission package. We don't feel that, that the neighbors are going to find the use detrimental. Um, we feel that our environmental um, features of the site are protected with our designs, um, that we comply with the standards other than the requested waiver, and that the, uh, the need for a clean alternative energy source in this location with, with no adverse impacts to the neighborhood is a good use for this spot. Okay. Uh, why don't we go down the outline? Uh, uh, Jennifer, <coughs> principal planner, uh, um, do you yeah, have the, the only real comments I have right now at this time is just to point out the, the email received from conservation today. Um, they had just received a filing late last week from these guys and haven't had a chance to really look at anything other than um, there's a piece missing with the 75 foot limit of structure set back on the plan. So. Um, I think they're setting up a hearing with you early or mid Yeah, our June, filings so. were a bit disjointed. I wanted to hit all the, the players at one time, but unfortunately conservation lagged behind the planning board filings. I spoke with Dawn a few moments ago before the hearing started. So we're tentatively scheduled for June 6th to take up these items with the commission. We have, our use has no other issues. There's no sanitary waste, there's no other group to see. Sure. Other than planning and conservation next door. Are, are you, you're outside the 50, but inside the, the hunt, inside the 75. Correct. Correct. So that might be of concern. Uh, under the local wetland bylaw, they're required to keep structures outside the 70 foot unless they request a waiver, which I believe they're going to do. Yeah, commercial uh, facilities need to be 75 yeah. foot, but it's something that the, the group can consider and waive. Okay. Can, yes. 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 Go ahead. Just since you just brought that up, a, a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, the fence, uh, the fence line in the back. I can't tell on my copy. It looks like it's right on that 50-foot line. Is it, or is it just beyond? inside the limit of work? It is within Gen the limit. Yeah, it 50 is inside, the, or it's outside the 50. Correct. Outside the 50, 52. I couldn't tell if it was inside or on it. But okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, through the chair. Go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. Haven't been on the compound through this before. I think I have a question at least. Um, I, mean, I hear what you're saying about the curb cut and kind of want to keep that going and having that with you. You have, but why not have the uh, interior parking area, driveway, construction area, whatever, um, like 20 feet closer and then move <coughs> to everything else 25 feet closer away from the wetlands? Is, is that an option? Or when, when, we, when we get into that, when we get more into the detailed stuff, sure, sure. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. But let's let's try to get through the, sure. the outline, and then we'll, we'll uh, add to that. Uh, Ada. Ada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we had prepared a review of the project. Uh, I'll run through the highlights for you. Um, First off, we were, uh, it is in a residential zoning district, but our first comment was, given that it's commercial use, whether it would be uh, uh, a good idea to consider the uh, additional buffer zone for commercial, as per your regs for commercial facilities. Uh, I'm not clear whether the bylaws allow for that or if it's just something that might be good, good housekeeping practice. Uh, as the applicant mentioned, the fence within the uh, within the setback, we were pointing that out and wondering if he angled his driveway a little bit as he came off from behind the house. If he could, he's 
probably not going to get completely out of the setback, but he might improve the distance. Uh, we realize it would also impact the backyard of the residence, but in keeping with the, the bylaw, I thought it was worth looking at. Um, our next call was purely on the visual impact to the, to the neighboring properties. Uh, they proposed screening um, to the majority of the neighbors, the southerly neighbor, with clearing to the property line. Um, we questioned whether that was uh, going to provide a visual hardship from that property or not. Uh, the uh, requirement that all utility commission connections be made underground appears to have met, with the exception that the transformer pads are above ground, uh, which is reasonable. Uh, we just would would note that they could pro provide some uh, additional vegetative screening, uh, particularly at the pad near the street. Some low shrubs might might just hide that. Um, the evergreen plantings they're showing, they're showing them in a, in a straight line, and we were suggesting that if they stagger them, they can help to cr prevent seeing gaps between the trees, if they kind of do them a staggered, two rows staggered. Might be more effective screening with basically the same number of plants. The other comment we made was that by their stormwater calculations, they're they're considering the pulled back area under the where the arrays are as um, a meadow in the stormwater calculations. And our our question was, given the area directly under the arrays, will we in shade? pretty much 100% of the time, uh, the ability of the grasses that are there to, uh, to flourish and whether they'll die back and what what vegetation will actually be sustained there and whether a different type of uh, ground cover should be, should be planted instead. Uh, the driveway uh, is proposed as the main construction access to the site. And as such, they're showing the typical stabilized construction entrance. And they're showing that being constructed right to the property line. And we just questioned whether or not it was uh, prudent to have a, at least an agreement with the neighbor that there may be some, some need to uh, restore that, that portion that may impact his, his property or whether there's an easement that might be required. Uh, we note that the conservation will need to be involved and also that the security fence, the detail for the security fence showed a six inch gap and you just wondered why. Um, could be for wildlife, I'm, I'm sure you can provide an answer. And lastly, uh, the majority of the stormwater comments all form around the central idea that the, um, the back where the arrays are is being modeled as, as a meadow with no impervious uh, surfaces by the calculations. <coughs> and now we understand that the way it will work is, you know, the water hits the solar arrays, it runs off, it hits the ground, and then it runs under the, underneath the array, the next array in the row. Um, but, so I, I agree with the applicant from the standpoint that it, it shouldn't be a model that is you know, a parking lot. But on the contrary, I don't, I don't think it should be modeled as a, a natural meadow either. So I think there's some middle ground that that would seem prudent. And I uh, wonder what, where we could come to some consensus on that. And uh, the last comment was on the uh, TSS removal credit for uh, the grass swales, and in, in speaking with the applicant's engineer this afternoon, uh, he had contacted me. Um, he brought up a good point that there shouldn't be uh, any suspended solids to be removed and to worry about. The, the arrays themselves should be clean runoff. There's no, hmm. other than, you know, just dust from the air, there's nothing that really should be of impact. So that, that comment may not uh, may not be necessary, and to be honest, the CONCOM will deal with that as well. So we can leave it to them. Okay. That's, that's a rundown. Okay. Now we're at the point where we've kind of got an overview of the project, and now we're going to add 
and this is both the planning board members first and then members of the public to add to our outline. To add into the outline is kind of like brainstorming. You just kind of get a subject out there. We will talk about the subject in great detail as we go down the outline. Uh, we proposed A through G. I think Frank had a good one to begin with, which was really talking about the layout. And we'll add that right on there uh, to the outline is basically a layout and where the panels are relative to, uh, I'll say, the, uh, the upland area, I guess. So we'll add that and to that. The other ones we have, in, we have a detailed discussion on our waiver request, the driveway width, the meter pad location, lighting, though I don't believe there is any, so it might be a short, quick discussion, screening, conservation commission, and stormwater management, which will include all of the items that Beta had put in in that area. Are there other members of the board that would like to add additional? Cliff? Yes. Um, you had mentioned something about removal of the stone wall that is that is existing. Did you did you mention something like that at the beginning? Simply that our, our uh, property is bounded by the stone walls, and along that southern line, we'll be removing vegetation up to that stone wall. Oh, up well, to won't be moving the you, wall. You won't be removing yeah, the wall. I yet. thought you said you removed the stone, yes. field stone wall as well. No, sorry. Remo no I'm sorry. Okay. We're removing yep. the vegetation up to the property line, which is the field stone wall. Okay. The, my reason for mentioning that is there will be a visual uh, demarcation of that line, so it's impossible for the contractors for select to slip over into a budding property and so cut the wrong trees. So through the chair again, yeah. um, the, the, you would mention that there are several trees on the, on the I believe the um, west face that you're going to be cutting down um, in back of the properties that are existing. Correct, along the westerly side, there are one, two, three. Yeah. And one has fallen down, so there are two. And and the purpose for that taking them down is, is what? Westerly exposure along uh, along the westerly side, exposure from the sunlight to lengthen the time that uh, those panels are in the sunlight. Have 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 you heard anything from the the abutters that they oh, well, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, screenings screenings on here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Screen. Screens on. Right. right. So you're still looking for items to add? Yep. Did you have yes. Yeah, go ahead. Question. Article 31 obviously states you can put the solar farm wherever you want, provided you meet certain criteria, one of which is the zoning of that particular area. Residence B states the maximum lot coverage can't be any more than 25%, yet your project looks like it's over 30 or 33%. Has anyone brought that up? Because it's a 3.05 acre lot with a one point something acre array. That's a third, at least by my mind. It's an interesting point. Uh, you might look at the aisles in there as not being covered. The lot coverage is proposed at 14% versus the 25% maximum. 14% with because of space between the arrays? Or? Right. Does that. Mr. Chair, does yes. that include the home as well? Yes. 14%, including the home and the arrays. And if I may, one more question. Go ahead. Your maintenance plan calls for four times a year you'll be going to the facility? Minimum four times a year. Mm -hmm. will, will you be coming more than that? And what kind of vehicles will be coming in and out of that driveway? Uh, will they be large trucks? Will it be a pickup truck? Will it be a yeah, pickup truck? The only thing we'll be talking about would be uh, mowing or weed whacking of. Okay, so grass whale in the basin. Major vehicles no, and the only meat. vehicles we'll see that are large will be during the construction phase. Okay. Okay. So. You're looking at items that. Mr. Yep. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, just can I give you some bullets? Yep. Array size. Just had a question about that. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the effect on Davenport. Davenport. These are probably just quick hits. Yep. But, yep. Um, underground utilities. Underground. I don't think this is appropriate, yep. but I just want to throw it out there. Sidewalks. Okay. It's always a good ask. Okay. We're good. Other ones from people? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. I was here originally for a screening. I'm on yeah. 199, which is just north 
property, that small lot there. Okay. Um, but more importantly now, and it's a safety matter, is the pad that's going to be at the end of the street side of the lot. Yep, we got the meter pad location as one of our bullet items. So because I won't be able to see backing out of my driveway. The got smallest it. bit of snow that gets piled there in the winter blocks my view. Do you know how that road is? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a tough road. Okay. Through the chair, is that Mr. Corny? Carrier. Carrier. Okay. Well, oh, go, well. go. Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, Jane Moran. I'm a member of the Upper Charles Field Committee, and um, I'll just take two seconds and explain why I'm here at these meetings lately. And our committee has been charged by the Board of Selectmen a few years ago to come up with some trails that go from the Milford Town Line to the Ashland Town. And our committee has been working hard over the years to try and figure out how this is going to happen. Um, one, just one of the various methods of how we're going to, to do this is to try and approach um, developers as they come into town and see if they would be willing to grant us an easement, uh, the town an easement, um, and they're in the 50-foot buffer zone along the, in, in this particular case, I think it would be um, the north and probably the east. And that, we have no, um, we have some very, you know, $50,000 visual concepts of how we're going to tie in from Milford to Ashland. But in order to do that, um, we have to be able to reach out to our community members in a um, cooperative manner and try and find out if they're willing to grant us this easement, to grant the town this easement, so that we could someday go in there and maybe um, urge them to help us develop this trail from one side of their property line to the other, and in joint cooperation with other property owners along the line in this 50-foot buffer zone, which is no man's land, and um, in an effort to achieve this goal. So I'm looking at this map and... Um, Before you get there, Mr. Chairman, through you, yeah, yeah, could you just give us an overview for this? Because my impression is the trails would run on the west side of 85. Do you, where do you plan on Chris we crossing have, over? We have no, we have not uh, determined where that is going to be. Uh, our challenge as a town is that most of the railroad bed was sold off to private homeowners over the years, over the last 80 to 90 years. Our challenge is to incorporate the old railroad bed where we can, but where we can't because it's private ownership, if they're willing to sell it to us, um, that would be fine, but if not, we're, we, have, we have been charged with finding other avenues to uh, develop this trail. One of our um, thoughts is to come from the Milford Bike Trail through College Rock up through all of these properties and eventually get to Tadaro uh, property, which the town owns. And we've already, um, you know, this is very premature. So for you, Mr. Chairman, yeah. perhaps maybe you could get us a rough outline of where you think? We are working on okay. that. We really That would, that would help okay. us a lot. Thank you. That would. And um, I understand that. And uh, my job, uh, we've broken up our committee members to go out to various members uh, committees and departments in the town so that we can kind of uh, increase our communication level and try and bring everybody on board and what we're trying to do um, and what the through the board of selectmen and that's our avenue and I okay think we can we, 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 we'll put this yes. on the on the outline for right now and we'll get back to it okay very great good. thank you okay uh, any more things to the outline well, that was good. Good exercise because we got a lot of new ideas here. Screening, and that's, screening, screening is screening is on the outline. <laughs> yes, we will spend a lot of time talking on screening. I promise you. Five E. Five E. Five E. Well, probably. To, well, we will. We'll get to it. We're, we're going to try to get through a lot of these tonight. We will try to. Some of them are going to be action items at the end of the day for for those guys, or maybe even Jennifer, uh, and. Uh, but let's try to get through all the, we, we've got about 20 minutes, but we're not going to rush through it. Uh, but let me, tr let me try to, 
take us and walk us through this thing. The first one was uh, the layout of the site, which was up to kind of Frank's comment of uh, perhaps moving it a little bit out of the wetland area. Uh, I think we kind of put that on as, as something that maybe CONCOM is going to force it force that issue anyway. So, you know, right today, I don't think we want to, I'll say, redesign it, uh, you know, here, because if CONCOM is going to push it to the west, that also doesn't help our friends and neighbors as well either, because it brings it a little bit further that way. Uh, it might help the, a couple of new people on, uh, on uh, Danport. Uh, but I, I think for tonight, I think we just leave this one alone with this an overall discussion kind of on it. Uh, won't close it out per se. I'd like to get to the driveway width. When I looked at it, I thought the driveway width was was way too, I don't know why you need a 20 to 25 foot wide driveway, particularly when this is just not going to see much traffic or anything. I mean, the disconnect we're having is that this um, this approach that we have on both sides of the table have taken to minimizing tree clearing, minimizing our footprint with our uh, access ways, flies in the face of what the fire chief wants to see. No, that the driveways need to be 20 foot wide into what, what, the facility. Why would we need a 20 foot driveway into a bunch of solar panels for, for the fire chief? I, I just don't see any logic at all to that. Okay, they actually. Heard from them. We haven't. Any I, I, I don't. I can't see any need for anything more than 10, 12 foot type of item because you're not going to turn a fire truck around. The guy's going to back up 200 feet. Right. I mean, it's. For their use, they certainly only need 12 feet. Right. Um, but certainly, a turning uh, an engine is. They would be outside the, the driveway, but. That, that may be all right. I mean, I, I. It's just a grass area. It's not like it's a swamp. It's not like it's not like, you know, there's. there's it's not solar panels might burn some electrical cable, but I mean, I don't think they're going to burn too much. If I can. Add yeah, go ahead. Miguel Linera, I'm a senior project manager with Select. I'm in charge of this project. Um, we are we follow uh, NFPA 18 which regulates access to these fields. The requirement there is for 20 feet. I am more than willing to have less than that, believe me. So what I would suggest is um, uh, having the fire chief, I guess, do that, have the, the ultimate, ultimate say, if you will. But uh, that's what we design for. Therefore, the size of the driveway as is. Does any member of the board remember what we approved over on East Main Street? I know I didn't let 20 feet go through this board. I don't think so, anyway. I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, we do have a new chief. I think that may be spurring some of these changes. Well, One comment on yeah. previous arrays yeah. that we've done. Um, the fire department likes to park a truck and be able to go around with other vehicles if so needed in a case of an emergency. That's the only rationale that I've been able to understand behind the width of the driveway. Okay. I mean, That's it. I am all open for making it less than 25. Okay. 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 So the action item is for Jennifer to talk to the fire chief yeah. and, and kind of ask a little bit about this because I just don't see 20 feet at all if, if necessary. I mean, you know, I, there's... Mr. Chairman, just one quick comment. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there's an L there, so you said the fire truck could turn around there, so they need, need a little bit more room to make that turn. Sure. I don't know. That's the only thing I'm thinking. Well, well it's a hammerhead. They can pull yeah. the chair. Yeah. Through the, it's a hammerhead, right? So they can pull in and then back in. Pull in, turn, turn, turn and, and back in. Well, and, and ask them that question too, because this is this is what 200 feet on the along the house somewhere. I'm 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 just guessing. 
I mean, 200 feet, half of us got driveways that are 75 to 100 feet. I mean, you know, I don't have a hammerhead for a fire chief to turn around in on my driveway. I mean, I, and you know, I, I, I just don't like 20 foot curb cuts in, in a residential neighborhood, if at all possible, and would love to see a little green space on that driveway between you and the neighbor. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, even though it's gravel, I mean, it's also impervious and so that's where I'm on the, on the, on the width. Now, if, if he's adamant, then we're, we're kind of stuck. But I don't think we've approved that to the other solar, solar array. And, and we certainly didn't allow, I don't think, a room to really turn around, if I remember that design. They, they could have maybe barely pulled into the array. Yeah. Uh, sure yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, name and address, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Margie Wigan, Five Cross. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, if it's a curb cut that you're concerned about, is it possible to have the curb cut be mm -hmm. one car width? So if the, re if the requirement is for a 20 foot driveway width, which may be to accommodate two fire trucks, is it possible to have just the curb cut be the more normal driveway width? It's, it's a, that's, and then feed into that's, a wider driveway that's, speed? that's always possible. So and that you could accommodate the two fire trucks. Yeah. We're going to try not to design it here for them tonight, but we're just <coughs> going to give them ideas tonight when they come back and with having talked to fire chief and whatever. Uh, let's let's move. Uh, we've got the driveway width. Let's kind of go with it. It kind of goes with that security fencing and whatever. If you change the driveway a little bit, you pull off the outline and get rid of the waiver, or maybe you put the fence and put the to turn around outside the fence. I mean, uh, you know, it, it just seems to me that you can make that work without the waiver. Uh, if you, I'll say, kind of work at it a little bit you know, with that corner. I, I, I personally am not so sure that we want to set a precedent of changing and allowing that kind of a waiver on this we're, this is our second one only in, in that we've approved, and I will admit it is sure. yeah, probably one of the best, you know, one of the most least obnoxious other than having somebody having a field or a bunch of trees behind their house. Um, but, I mean, solar panels don't make too much noise, and, and uh, you know, you get kind of used to them, I guess. I don't, but... But if we don't have to change the, the fencing and, and keep with the bylaw, I think that would work out much better. And if you don't have a 20-foot wide driveway, I, th I think that gets you closer to that. But then again, I don't want to design it tonight. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Uh, it isn't isn't um, our, our ordinance 20 feet for a, a access road? Is that is that what I believe <coughs> we have? An ordinance for well, this is a, this is if it was a, a roadway with to a bunch of homes that don't have sprinkler systems in them, and I'm not sure this meets that criteria right. at all. And I so mean, that that brings up my question: Is is there a future projection on on change to this to this lot once the solar panels have been put in and to get to the back through? No. no. You, with the well, then, you, you, are this you is referring it. to the width of the driveway? Yes. What we are hearing from the chief is that all access drives that they will need to use to treat any potential issue at this at any site across town will be uh, 20 foot, 20 foot wide. We are trying to, to keep in line with that directive from the chief that we've now heard on a couple of projects. But it hasn't been specified by this project. No, well, no not street, as street, yet. If you if you if you sprinkle the house, you can go back to 12 feet. It doesn't make any sense to sprinkle these. <laughs> That's the genesis for the. Yeah, got it. Well, let's, I'm let's, just trying to follow. Let's see if we let's let, let's see if we can see if there's reason on this one, because that kind of does maybe the waiver li list whatever. We've got uh, another. 
10, 15 minutes here. Let's let's uh, hit the meter pad location that uh, our friend here uh, talked about. This is the one that's on the out front of the house. Do you want, Jennifer, do you want to kind of put your finger on it up a little bit yeah. more? Yeah. Right yeah. there. There you go. Yep. Why does it have to be there and not next to the transformer in the back? Mr. Chairman, I yeah. can talk about that one. Okay. Um, I um, I can tell you one thing. We typically the utility does three poles, so they basically will come in and off of the closest pole they will install three poles along the line, basically along that line. We felt it would be uh, a terrible visual for the neighborhood from either house. Plus, it gets very cluttered. Yeah, I, I just want to show you a picture of a previous array that we did where we also have six poles. As you can see, right over there is not yeah, a great and, picture. And, and, and we, we, this board on East Main Street, told them to pound sand with that. Okay. We don't want that. <laughs> and, and, and we wouldn't allow that. So you, you're not going to get approval for any more poles out of this board. So the alternative is a concrete pad, I think it's five by eight, if I'm not mistaken, sure. where they will put the meter box. Okay. We I haven't gotten explicit dimensions from the utility yet. It could be there, it could be five feet forward, back, uh, back or forward. Why couldn't uh, it be behind the house or right, right next to your transformer pad? I don't know the answer for that. We had a meeting on site and they told us it has to be a certain distance from the pole that's right there. I'm sorry I don't recall what that number was, but we, while meeting on the site, it was decided this is the spot. Well, why don't you go ask them again and tell them the planning board doesn't like it out in the front yard. Um, it is though, if I may add, in the property. It is not outside of the property, it's not on the street, it's not on your property, and I it's understand your, listen, it, it, I live in Pleasant, I believe me, know all about that, I agree with you, it's a terrible street to back Well, out. We, we also, it isn't within the 50-foot setback, so you don't need zoning with that, the way I would interpret zoning. I didn't know that that would fall under that, but I'm not trying to be argumentative. Yeah, I know, I know. I feel my hands are tied because of... Uh, the utility requirements or uh, lack of negotiating in this position. I will nonetheless try to work with them as much as we can. That said, I have no issue with Beta's comment of surrounding it with evergreens or aborvites or whatever species that is. That, 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 that makes his, his view shed yeah. worse. Oh, they block yeah. the yeah. I just yeah. didn't yeah. think about yeah. so yeah. yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't think triangle. about that very good. Yeah. Yeah. Point of yeah. clarification for the yeah. chair. I think what we're asking is that if you check with the utility to make sure uh, that make it known that our preference is that the pad is back by the transformer and if they have any requirements that it has to be near the street or a pole then have that be as far away from right now so we can, un we can see that and understand it. Yeah. The, one, no, the one on East Main is I believe several hundred feet away because yeah, it's it's, it, was, it was not anywhere near and then they came in with three poles after we permitted without it, and we told them to go pound sand. Yeah, so listen, I don't have a problem with that, but I cannot guarantee to you. You can bring the Eversource person here if they don't like something that you're going to get approved or not approved. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, and we'll talk about the pole in the middle of the road too. But is this specifically for the neighbor, or are we talking in general? This is in general. general. In we general, want, we want to back up. The we, we want to see it. We don't want to see it. All right. I mean, that's. I, I'm, I think I'm speaking for the board there. And to you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. The safety is better to have it back off the road, so for parking for the utility trucks. Well, right. I think too. I think too minimally, it needs to meet the 50 foot setback. Mm hmm. If, if I can add, it's not going to meet the 50-foot setback um, on the side. It can meet it from the front, but it won't meet it on the side Side's due 25. to the proximity side, of, right, of side the right there. Yeah. Side is 25. Got it. Yeah. No, That's it. I will definitely approach them to get a better response from them. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, I'm, I don't have a lot of background on this, but my understanding typically is utilities, this is a convenience 
this is the meter. They want to close the street, so they have to put as little effort in reading the meter as they can. I don't think there's any practical reason why it couldn't be further back. I, yeah, electricity over 200 feet doesn't lose a little bit. Right. <laughs> I think they explained that they read it electronically. I think they all go in electronic. You're right. But so, typically, yeah. the, it's convenience for them. It's not more than that. Okay, we got a, Chair, I brought yeah. up a point about underground utilities. Do you want to discuss that now? Since Th this kind of this would be a good way. I th the way I view this is everything is underground that they did. The, I mean, you got the two the, pads. The only question I had was connection to the pole. Is it underground and then just runs up the side it's of the pole? Right, sure. That's, That's all I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Okay. okay. Everything else is underground. Okay. That part we were, I was very happy with them seeing it. Okay, we're going, let's see, let's get to make sure we're getting through all these so we give you an initial part so that maybe next time we'll, we'll come back with everything else. Um, lighting. Lighting, there was no lighting. I think no we can lighting. check that all off. Uh, the screening, I think uh, Beta's idea was, was better. Uh, uh, these along. Uh, this is a spot, uh, another select site that... Um, Thought might be a, a good guy. They were not available. I'm sorry, Wednesday. Okay. Noon time. But, uh, and this is what uh, we have proposed on the plan. The seven foot height, the eight foot on center. You can see the uh, black vinyl chain link fence behind it. And as they mature, uh, that gap between obviously will go away. And, and as they grow, uh, the view shed from uh, higher elevations um, will be blocked. So as a starting off point, this is what um, we have included with our designs, this is what we are proposing. If I may, sure. go ahead. All right, um, I see a couple things that, that come to mind right off the bat with what you just handed out. And one was when I thought, when I heard black vinyl, I thought that you would put black vinyl through the fence in order to have complete blockage. The, the panels. So I'm wondering where that. Um, the you know, uh, let, me, oh, let me try this one. Uh, Mr. McDowell has been here many times, and he swears that the black vinyl fence is something you don't see as well as I'll say the galvanized chain link fence, and and that's what we've say at the other one, and also see farms uh, where they had to put fencing around stuff and. I think he's probably right. Al's all, he, he doesn't like the rail either, quite frankly. Just on the top rail the last time we were at, but because uh, uh, he says that's what makes it more visual than anything else. To me, the top rail, you're going to be solar panels, which kind of look like top rails to me. So, All right, so my next part of this is is the Arborvitaes, the, the deer like to come and on the Arbor Valley, and when there's no no food source around, and they they don't take well for a long period of time, and so and like the chair had said, you know, staggered distancing between each would allow visual impact to be at best. Um, so I don't think that that Arborvitaes are, are the right way to go under this under this uh, design that you're with. I think that something else should be uh, maybe maybe brought up as far as um, uh, screening with regards to that because it's just I've seen it happen all over where trees just get from four feet up four feet down. And there's nothing left. If, if I may add, and again, I'm not be wrong. These controlled in this installation, remote. There's nobody there, and they haven't been chewed. And I know for a fact there's deer there. So somehow this, which I apologize, not right now. It, I could have that incorrect. I don't want to quote that and say the wrong thing. Was requested to us by the planning board in Holliston to because of that they have proven to be successful. Okay. In Holliston. Okay. There is a there is an arbor body that here at all. Okay. 
front street house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chewed up. All gone. Yeah, you can tell how tall the deer are. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Looking forward, I would rather would would be permanent that you let's uh, let's try to wrap this up today. I think we got all the ones that would result maybe in a plan change. Time, I would advise you to talk with your neighbor and try to make him as happy as he might be for for our next meeting. Uh, I don't want to. What about that setback? The uh, fence. Does this setback, they, they already know what they're possibly one, doing. One of the items somebody added was array, array size. Would that affect the plan change? No, I just have a question about the size because I did 864 um, units and they're 0.26 kilowatts and come out to 224, not 250. Math wrong. Um, Tell you, give me one second. Have, um, ah, let me see where. Sorry, we have 36 full tables as shown. They have 24 panels each. Okay. That's a total of 164 panels. Yeah. And we're we're using 160 watt. Okay. Per it's at 260. Type. Just so. big deal. That's, that's fine. That's fine. It Thank is you. A, 11 kW. Okay, thank you. That's good. Okay. And I used to yeah. say something. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. There's a tree that was proposed to be taken down at the corner of my lot. If you turn that over. Sure. <laughs> Remove that tree until this discussion is finished. Some of the trees have been knocked down. I want to make sure that you can see it. From your yard. And the Abavite, those Abavites of the deer have decimated. Okay. It's not going to. So they're going to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you got to get it back here. Discussion is for continue at the next meeting. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I think conservation might be rearranging this a little bit. That's my gut feel. I mean, they did it on the last last one, and then once they do that, then things get a little. And but I giving them some design parameters. Mr. Chair, yes. Since we're finishes up tonight, can we make sure that they understand we're all you know they should be thinking about the staggered screening, the staggered plantings. And just for clarification, was there an answer? Not to put anyone on the spot, but Bill, are you, are you okay not touching the tree that they're asking about? Uh, talking about, I'd, I'd like to. It's it's a tall it's it's a tall tree. And it's going to screen the panels. Uh, I'd rather look for an alternative. It's kind of the, there was two fir trees dying, and I pushed it over, and uh, the other one is in existing. Um, after, yeah, yeah, until I construction can, I can well, I want to hold off until the screening. I don't want that right. bill coming, bulldozing sure. that thing down before we put this to rest. Figure out what's going to happen. I think well, that's well, sure. Uh, beta report. You said you had some about um, stormwater uh, measurements and uh, issues. You said it, you didn't feel comfortable at all. And uh, I'm looking at now, of course, it's you know, under construction, but. Uh, Historically, I'm looking at uh, some. And it's uh, clearly a meadow to me. I mean, that, that that was the point. The the existing meadow, and they have modeled it in the proposed as a meadow. And my point is, is that it, it's not like a park. It's not a natural meadow. Some that that was under cultivation for a hundred years. One one of the that I, with the last one, I remember going to a uh, farm that's up there on East in South Burrow, and I was amazed how much stuff was grown underneath the panels. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was, it's gonna I didn't stuff. see the, the runoff and stuff like that that I expected. I, yeah, it was just, I, 
Parks and yep. Shade. That if, if you know that that array that graph, the grass is growing underneath all the arrays. <laughs> okay, let's see. Time is at best meeting on the sixth, Correct. and our next meeting is on the thirteenth. But if you ask you to make some changes, you won't have anything. Time. Yeah, we would have been sort of being after the. What's the What's the, the next one after that, Jen? And we have nothing on that agenda at this point. Okay. We potentially might have a new elementary school if they have anything that they have not filed a piece of paper yet. So let's um, let's let's uh, continue. And entertain a motion to continue this on the June 20, 2016 at 7.30. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Vote aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone staying? Carries. Okay, thank you very much. Aye. Very productive, I think, today. Yeah, oh, and this is the stormwater and the other. Uh, yes. Oh, and we will need an extension request to the that expires on June 13th. You'll get a request from them first. It's on the 13th. Just my arm first, Frank. There we go. Extension request. <laughs> okay, it is Okay, come on down. Okay, let's uh, get started. We are uh, missing two members tonight, so my question will be the special permit stuff serve all the people we can to that tonight so uh, uh, but they will watch well, the tape except, um, the, the request requesting withdrawal so yes, well, yes but and they're not on the agenda other than a withdrawal right. this is the so, one the continuation, Ken, is, is Roy's matter, is that your thing? Which, what are you... No, no, this, the change of the master plan buildable and uh, adjustment to the master plan buildable area, the master plan special permit change. So we're going to continue that to the next meeting. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah You've got, you, you got enough to do. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, is there a difference between site yes. permit yeah. for a special permit is a six super majority the other one you only need five of us right but even if we continue with the site plan review tonight is it those who are not here to watch the feedback they, so they have done it several times before we, we what would want every we yes want that yeah back. and i already talked to one of them and said problem um, I both of them have watched it in the past yeah i think you just watched it six number yeah for the permit i want want to before we open this want to preserve that out because um, once those two will, like are not here and watch it this is their one meeting they miss any others so if they do lose their vote yeah we wouldn't have that right so but, i think he's just trying to preserve the special permit i appreciate that okay so let's uh let's with that aspect uh well let's open the public here for uh, northwest 
Northeast and North Club Villages at Legacy Farms, location on the Osmond Site Plan Review. Also, a special permit without any further discussion. I'd entertain a motion to continue the Master Plan Special Permit uh, change to um, June 13th at 8 p.m. June 13th at 8 p.m. So moved. Moved. Second. Moved, moved and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, so that is out of there. Now, open. Uh, there was an outline that was put uh, for key bullet points. So there's a table today. Uh, in the out, what we left out was the uh, director planner report and also an opportunity to add to the outline by the planning board. And so we'll follow this kind of revised board. Everything else is pretty much the same, I think. Uh, since since we've been talking about this, um, basically all but three of us are kind of up at a, a little bit more level, and we've got three new members tonight. We're going to go through because we're we're starting afresh, but we're going to go. Our three new members are right here, all on my right today. <laughs> They're going to dictate because that isn't to say that the seasoned members uh, aren't going to chime in and maybe help the discussion and explain why we are these things. But it's really up for these three new members to get to the point where they're comfortable to be able to make the vote. So they're, they're pretty quick so far. Let it go and, and you know, all set. The only last thing I want to say is a preliminary thing. You know, uh, uh, Roy is working on some LNG safety stuff, and we want to get that peer reviewed. And then at that point, we're going to feel, I think, a lot more comfortable about the whole thing. That's a key. Uh, I'll say the uh, the the, uh, the the plan to get 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 to approval. Okay, and then it'll take a couple of weeks probably to get peer review it, etc. Uh, so anyway, why don't we get started with kind of an presentation, general overview. Give them the soup to nuts, and you can take a little bit more time on that if you want to explain a lot of the features. But it's, mm -hmm. you're, you're, I mean, it's, it's public by allowed to be part of this process too. You've got three key people to listen to you. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, for the record, is Mark Mastriani, the applicant of the proposal before, and, and here in the back. With Pulte Homes as well, so we're the co applicants. And to my right is John Kusich and Matt Merva. They're the uh, civil engineer and the landscape architect with Bowler and has been helping us with the process. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations and welcome Thank you. on your election Thank you. appointments. Um, we started again at Legacy Farms, and um, Matt actually has a intensive and thorough presentation um, to bring you up to speed and that's what we paid it doing and we wanted to do pretty much everything that we resubmit and I don't think the last here working with the board and, and working with beta uh, and working with the design the, the design re review board has been a way because it's really that allowed us to improve our plan plan that we've resubmitted kind of incorporates all of the improvements and all of the comments that we've heard over the last several months and that Matt would like to present today and through all of the changes that we and present the, uh, the, the, the plan that we've submitted. Does that sound good, Matt? That sounds perfect. Okay. Great. Uh, and Matt oh, Merva, and, and one thing, and Sorry. if he does have a plan that he wants to go through, 
up to the board. What? But if he could get through it all, mm -hmm. we can answer questions. Yeah, that would be best. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah. works the best. It's quite a bit of information. <coughs> Make a little room to... <laughs> Uh, thanks for your time tonight again, Mr. Polar Engineering Tech. Been working with Pulte uh, on the plans uh, for a few months now. Uh, we're excited to be back in front of you tonight and present um, how we got to where we are today, but also some of the new features of the plan and really bring bring everybody back up to speed with uh, we've come over the past few months. Uh, just generally speaking. Uh, Beginning of the permit process last year, uh, we've worked closely with the Conservation Commission. I believe we, we need to go back to them once we have these plans approved by the planning board, uh, but they are providing very positive feedback so far. Uh, the plan you see before you actually um, brings the development away from a lot of the resource areas and buffer areas, uh, which the Conservation Commission was. Uh, was much in favor of. Uh, we've we've worked closely with the fire department uh, on roadway widths and turning radii, and uh, been able to refine the plan to uh, their satisfaction as well. We've worked closely with water and sewer department. Uh, met again with the design review, who had ultimately signed off on the change. We've been working through months. They had a lot of great input on the. And I'm going to walk through some of those components tonight as well. Uh, and then we with with Beta, who's been reviewing this project on behalf of the town. Uh, they provided comments on the initial submission. We responded to those comments. We met with Beta. Um, once those comments came out, we incorporated a lot of those ideas into the new plans. Uh, and we have since met with them again uh, to review uh, any remaining items outstanding and have responded to that final uh, which now. Uh, the project is similar in many ways to how it started. We still have 425 units. We still have 201 simplex units. We're looking at 224 family attached units. That's all consistent with the uh, initial master plan special permit that was already approved uh, by the master developer. In terms of the layout for the project, uh, the original master plan special permit used about of developable area. We've actually condensed our plan to uh, 74 and a half acres. So, like I said, the CONCOM was pretty excited about that reduced building footprint, pulling things in, away from the buffers a little bit, and also providing additional open space along Legacy Farm. Uh, so that there's some buffer between the units and the roadway. Also in terms of ways are now 20 feet wide. Some iterations with the fire department on that had settled on uh, that acceptable to them. We're providing sidewalks throughout the uh, for pedestrian access and we're providing contiguous access to open space all around the project, which I'll get into more in the, uh, the track network plan. In terms of the site grading, uh, we point out that um, the north project differs a lot from the south project that's already been permitted and approved, uh, built, in that there's a lot of topography that we're dealing with here, which we feel is kind of a benefit to the plan uh, because there's a lot of relief from the main track farm road north neighborhoods that are attaching to there's a lot of grade differential uh, for example in the northeast village uh, the driveways into the project around elevation force sloping down away from the road so that by the time you get down to this basin here you're at about elevation 356 so there's about a hundred grade change here as you traverse so you're never getting a full view of, of the development. It's really kind of uh, cascading away from you. On the North Club Village, uh, here, 
the driveway entries are at about 444, and the village itself is up at about 480. So there's a slope here where we're able to maintain a lot of the existing vegetation on Franklin Road, Sea Farms Road North, and that will sit up high uh, between uh, with a, a buffer of landscape between the roadway elevation where the motorist would be and the, the units above. Northwest Village, the it is sloping away again, about 480 right here, to approximately 400 down at the base. There's about 80 feet of slopes away. So you never get a full look, really, at, at what the whole uh, project <coughs> in its entirety is unless you're uh, in a high looking at it from this angle. Um, in terms of the utilities and drainage on site, our stormwater management has been designed in full compliance with state and local requirements. Similar to how drainage on the south side uh, handled in a series of bioretention areas and infiltration basins in green, uh, darker green around the sun in more detail have been submitted. Um, these basins are designed to drain fully within 72 hours, so they're not holding water. There's no standing water in those. Um, the sewers, we're pumping our effluent to the uh, water treatment plant that was constructed as part of the south development. We'll be on the 12 inch main line that we'll be tapping off of each of the, uh, the new neighborhoods as those get constructed. And each village will have an 8 and a 12 inch main going into those areas. Electric and phone uh, extend into each village also from Legacy Farms Road north. Uh, trash pick. Uh, works on the south side, and uh, removal will, will be handled in a similar way that the south side was with um, snow plow to the sides of the road and onto the essentially the, the front yard of roadway within the development itself. Uh, so just in terms of the landscape concept that uh, is part of the, the planning, uh, we, we kind of walking the site uh, with Pulte extensively to understand the characteristics of the land, some of which I just mentioned in terms of topography, but also in terms of uh, buffering properties and where we can maintain some existing vegetation uh, where there are some mature stands of trees. A lot of the, the land has been in agricultural use, obviously, over the years. So there aren't a lot of areas. A lot of it is uh, playing, uh, sort of old field succession type of landscape that you would see. We do have some significant vegetation on this hillside of Legacy Farms Road North where it intersects and which we've we've made sure we've we've captured and maintained uh, along with uh, healthy along uh, where the Mesit properties which we've enhanced with additional planting and then as I said before we've tried to make things compact and tight so that all of the surrounding the property uh, will be maintained and there will be a trail network going through those areas as well. And then there's some great spots such as along, uh, like it's, there's a pines here that we really thought was pretty special. There's an old stone foundation in this area. All of that's going to be left in its natural state. We're going to provide some additional around it hold the home that we can maintain features like that. In, in, in addition to whatever existing vegetation we so proposing quite a bit of planting of our own. We're looking at about 1,600 new trees to be planted on site, 1,000 deciduous, uh, and those are in addition to all trees that were originally proposed as part of the construction of Legacy Farms Road North to be planted by the master developer. Uh, in 
those 1,600 trees, trees and shrubs at each individual unit. Uh, we have enlargements of those in the, the submittal package. Um, and then quite a bit of additional landscape enhancements that I'm going to do uh, momentarily. Uh, we're providing lighting on site as more of a wayfinding measure. We're not trying to light like a, like a large parking lot in the neighborhood. We're looking at 50 at intersections and other key locations just, just to provide some wayfinding throughout the neighborhood. So I mentioned uh, that we've been, we've been kind of hard at work over the past few months with the various agencies and the peer reviewer, uh, Beta, who we've enjoyed working closely with. And I just wanted to run through some of the plan modifications uh, as part of that process, if I could. Um, this is sort of a diagram highlighting some of the areas where uh, Beta's suggestions on um, some, some tweaks and some modifications to the plans that we, we think really have helped to enhance where we are. Uh, they suggested that we look at uh, realigning some roadways to create less straightaways uh, and some more interest in the, the curves and curvilinear nature of the roads. This area specifically, we're able to provide more uh, curved and aesthetic uh, design to that road that allows the units to start to step in and out from the edge of the roadway and create not just a, a straight line of, of front, front garage doors. We've also looked at staggering in and out from uh, particular areas like here at Maple Street, the new set of plans we had before, we actually <coughs> did that everywhere. We didn't just do it. We've begun to jog the homes in about 5, 10 feet so that that, that line of, of garage doors is not announced and it's a, a little more um, articulated. Look back at the pocket parts throughout the Already proposing one right here, a village. Uh, we've one in each each neighborhood now. There's an additional two up here, additional here um, that we think will be great little spaces for people to. Get. It's not a large park, but it, it sort of uh, creates a, a buffer at intersections where you have uh, an additional pathway with some bench seating around the perimeter, opening on to generous lawn area with some light pole feature or street sign uh, and then some vegetable ornamental trees create some screening between these parks and the units so we've, we've added uh, additional parks throughout um, we've also uh, tweaking the location of the units so that we face on to a T intersection People tend to not want to be flashing right in their <laughs> in their windows as uh, as people are driving around the neighborhood. So we we made some modifications to the plans that account. Another another comment that we a few times was to try to add um, ends to road for, and we've actually done that new um, the sacks all of these roadway connections now. So they were just kind of a K-turn hammerhead before, which the fire department was fine with. It was fine for safety, but theoretically, there'll be a little uh, circular termination of each roadway with a, a planted uh, median island, uh, more aesthetically pleasing. If I'm going too fast or too slow, let me know. Uh, Okay, my best landscape pockets. Uh, we've all landscape around some of the bioretention. Another comment we discussed with Beta. Uh, so we've we've diagrammed that and incorporated that into these areas that you see in the, the lime green color here. At all of the entries, 
from Legacy Farms Road North into our neighborhoods, providing uh, an enhanced planting feature that will consist of uh, some fencing and um, and enhanced shrub planting and ornamental tree planting that will really highlight those entries. And I'll get into that a little bit more discuss uh, the different neighborhoods. Additional landscape in between the duplexes, between the driveways to further calculate the division between the units, um, which I think will soften that look as well. Uh, we made some modifications to our original tot lot design. This is in this area here. It's central to both villages. Uh, it's got a pathway that will actually connect in two locations so you can easily access it from either direction. Uh, and we've also provided a fence along the roadway edge to keep errant soccer falling into the road a little bit. Uh, so we've we've looked at some some beta comments relative to that and incorporated those as well. One suggestion was to provide trees in the uh, sack. Uh, we've done that in in each of the locations that I just highlighted. And I'll talk further about the trail network, but uh, one comment was to try to make connect people through the site, Fifth Street, up through here, and back to the trail network beyond. And that trail connection right here, which will also have some evergreen screening to buffer the views to and from uh, the neighboring units, and we'll also be providing some sections of split rail fence to sort of guide on the direction they need to walk through the trails uh, to kind of stay out of the, the more private uh, backyards of, of those homes. Uh, another thing we've been looking at as part of the design review board process We discussed at length the idea of trying to provide uh, distinct neighborhood identities within the overall project. Uh, what one comment was um, we, that we kept hearing was, we don't want these all to look the same. We want them to have some distinct characteristics. And what we do is incorporate uh, a family of uh, street trees, flowering trees, furnishings, uh, lighting, fencing uh, into each of these neighborhoods so that that theme would be picked up in their pocket parks, in their entries into those neighborhoods, uh, in the street trees that are planted along those, so that this neighborhood has a distinct character uh, that separates it from this one so that each one is, is a unto itself. So kind of northwest to southeast, uh, got several different identities. The first one being the Hillview neighborhood, which would be characterized by uh, having a horse chestnut, service berries, uh, honey locust, and tulip trees as kind of the trees in this neighborhood. Uh, in terms of shrubs and accent planting, we're looking at lilacs and rhododendron that are more in the white family of, of flowers. And one thing we're trying to do is introduce varieties of plants that were originally uh, introduced by uh, the Mezit family's long history of horticulture uh, into each of these neighborhoods to try to um, carry on that legacy that, that's been here uh, over the years. Uh, some of the species you'll see right out of that, that playbook, so to speak. And then the fencing in the hill. Hillview neighborhood would be a split rail cedar fence, so you'd see that at see that in the pocket parks uh, and any that element, and then a cedar street and post, and actually a cedar post for a gooseneck lamp as our our street light of that neighborhood that I refer to as Hillview. 
really sorry. You're looking at my back here. Oh, I brought that to me. <laughs> In the Eastwood Acres neighborhood, we're more in the purple family for our, our shrub and uh, ornamental trees. So we're using an Eastern uh, Spiridendron. And then characterized as a white cedar picket fence. And we would also use that same wood uh, for our street light and street fence with a kind of ornamental fixture uh, for those street lights. And again, those elements carry through in the pocket parks and the site entrance uh, and places where we're from. Oak Glen neighborhood, uh, still a white, but now we're using a split rail. Uh, similar street sign and street light, kind of cousins here in, in sort of the same region. So we wanted to pick up on some themes. Uh, but our flower palette is more in the yellow range here. Uh, and then using dog, red oak, uh, and, and accent. And then Ridgecrest neighborhood, which is this purple bubble here. Palette is more uh, black steel, aluminum type of site furnishing, so that would be our fencing element that would carry through in those pocket parks and entries. Uh, we have a decorative uh, black lantern with a cap, uh, and our plant palette is in the deep deep red to, to pink uh, with accent trees, um, street trees of sugar maple, river birch, uh, tupelo, um, zelkova, in, in areas throughout the site. And finally, the Hallmark Heights neighborhood, and these names are just placeholders, these aren't intended to stick, but we just wanted to be able to identify them easily for discussion. Uh, but this neighborhood right here, which we're calling Hallmark Heights right now, would be characterized instead of a fencing element, we're actually incorporating stone walls, natural stone walls on site. Uh, so that happens in the the pocket park system that you see here. Uh, we're using a, a black uh, post with a lantern style light fixture, which is also incorporated with the street sign. <coughs> and then our, our uh, shrub palette has the Mesut rhododendron, the pink mountain laurel, uh, and we're looking at sergeant cherry, uh, purple beech, tulip tree, and uh, linden and elm <coughs> trees in this neighborhood. So that's kind of how we broke down the neighborhood identity, and um, that was pretty well received by the design review board, uh, who again gave, gave us kind of a, the nod. I think this past week that they were were happy with with the direction we've been taking. So all of those elements are going to be incorporated into the the final plan package as we move forward here. Uh, We've also incorporated some additional features uh, as part of just general discussion that we wanted to run through quickly. Uh, things that help to enhance the overall look and feel. Uh, one thing that we've discussed is providing additional landscape berms along Legacy Farms Road North, which you can see highlighted on this plan and a little bit better in the enlargement views. You can see kind of the the lighter coloring where those berms would be three to four to five feet tall uh, to further screen the view to and from the units that, that back out onto uh, Legacy Farms Road North. So we think that'll be a nice feature uh, to help provide some additional, uh, some additional screening. We've taken some um, 3D model views of what that would look like. So this is a, a view actually looking right from this area across this berm at these two units and you can just barely see the back of that one. So those are the two units right here. This berm is right here and you can almost <coughs> make out right here the, the roof line of of these two units right here. So you can see what the 
the change in topography and the planting along the top of that berm uh, will do to help uh, mitigate that, that view to and from. This one I don't think you have seen. <laughs> <laughs> And then this would be a view this is looking along this edge right here you can see the sidewalk along Legacy Farms Road North right here and you're looking across these berms basically at the back of these units here so those are pretty well screened by that berm as well so again, that's happening all, all up and down from this basin over, essentially all the way up to, um, to the end of the development. And in here, you know, we really have quite a bit of grade change already, uh, sort of built in naturally, and a lot of existing vegetation to remain there. Another way we're, we're layering up the landscape to provide some additional interest throughout the neighborhoods is providing enhancement areas where you see these highlighted nodes. Um, in addition to the street trees that would be planted along there, where you see these highlighted areas, we would be providing uh, additional ornamental planting. And we're just showing that in, in each neighborhood. So there's probably 30 or 40 locations like that uh, where we have a type A and type B enhancement planting which would just simply look something like this where in each of those A areas you'd have some additional ornamental grasses and some upright evergreens that uh, create a little accent planting around the street tree there which helps to visually break up the, the corridor along those roadways. And then the type B, where we have a little more space, we're providing a little bit more of an enhanced area, which would have an even larger ornamental shrub, uh, additional ornamental grasses, and then upright evergreens and uh, lower flowering shrub elements. Uh, and these, these would pick up on the neighborhood themes that we uh, described in the, the previous set of plans. Any questions on landscape so far? Um, I, I have one to the chair. Um, the, the trees, I mean, you've got a, a good array of trees. Um, what's the percentage of, of evergreens versus um, hardwoods? Uh, so 600 evergreens I think we have right now and 1,000 uh, deciduous. So probably 60% or so uh, deciduous, 40, I don't, roughly, that's roughly the math. Plus uh, 1,600 yeah. overall. So. 1,600 overall, yeah. So. All right, I, so I'll only, I'll only, less than 30 percent. The only thing I'm, why I question that is, is I, I, I do believe that I'd rather see if, in my opinion, up more indigenous trees than, than evergreens, but I know that they, they pose to do more blockage with that, right? Is that? Uh, yeah, we're using evergreens really as the screening elements between homes yeah. because they provide year-round uh, character mm. for us, year-round screening. Uh, and then the deciduous trees are focused uh, mainly as the street tree feature. So those, the way the canopy of those will grow is out of the way of cars. It doesn't block visibility. Um, so th those make great trees for along the roadway edges. Um, but back where we're trying to provide buffering and screening, we're, we're using primarily evergreen material. Yeah. And uh, there was something we brought up last time in, in, in conjunction with the last plan that we were listening to, is that deer like to eat those evergreens. Um, has that been duly noted for 
the type of evergreen that you're gonna yeah we're really not providing any arborvitae which are typically that's like a cafeteria for deer so we're not uh, we're not using those um, I you know it's always going to be uh, somewhat of an issue but um, we are uh, trying to provide those in areas where um, we're not right up against the woods so we're not kind of inviting the deer right up to the uh, the evergreen areas yeah, but we know to, that they'll uh, chew on them they always seem to find okay. their way yeah um, so so there are evergreens out there that are a little bit more expensive to get from what I understand from our last meeting and that might suit the purpose better for those deers that are <coughs> going to come out of the woods and Mr. Chair, I, I believe the majority of the ones they've chosen the deer are interested in as you mentioned the Abravite very much that's like main course the certain taxes they really like I think the varieties they've chosen I think yeah we're talking about spruce, spruce white pine, uh, pine um, fir, Norway's right. um, various things so I think those are far less susceptible okay Mr. Chairman question for you yeah, please good. so um, can you pull up the, the slide you had with the sidewalk and the, the, the berms view. the berms perspective view because I did notice in um, Legacy South the distance, and this might not be, I, I think the town was involved in the road and stuff, but in Legacy South, there's about 10 feet between the curbside and the, the sidewalk. Is but in Legacy here? North, yeah, it's called the Greenbelt area. But um, in Legacy North, it's about two feet, if that. Um, it's not going to look like that. How do you, in, because obviously there's no berm. There's winter sand is going to be there. Um, I, I know, so I kind of should have prefaced this because I think you guys are doing a great job with all the buildings and everything and all the landscaping internally. And I'm coming in late to the game, so it's, please take what I say with a, a grain of salt. But um, I'm kind of disappointed with the, the curb appeal look uh, of the lack of curbs because how are you going to keep the sand and salt and crap off the, right. the green area? So maybe if you could just elaborate on that a little bit. Sure, that's a great question. Um, so on the south side, uh, on the north side, we actually have more dimension between our sidewalks and the, the back of the, the roadway. Uh, so we feel that there's a better dimension for keeping grass maintainable in that area. And we've also provided curbs now uh, that you don't see on the south side. Uh, as part of our, our drainage and layout, and that's that's something I forgot to mention. Um, it's going to be added, on. sorry, or it, actually, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think you're referring to the main road. Yes, yeah, I wanted to clarify that. Sorry, just the, the just the main road in the neighborhoods. So just the main road. Let's talk about the main road. So the main road is designed uh, somewhat similar but different than the south. There are some areas you're right that are as narrow as three, three and a half feet on the grass strip. Those haven't been put in yet, so it does look narrower than it really is. But there are other areas on the north side, it really varies. It can vary anywhere from a three-foot grass strip to a, a 15-foot grass strip. It, it does vary quite a bit. And the the sidewalks themselves are permeable pavement. So I don't know if you've ever driven up there, but there's over a foot of crushed stone under all the sidewalks. So those things drain very, very nicely. And the, the edges of the grass, and this, you'll notice the same thing on the south side, until the finished paving is done, they're always susceptible because with all the construction vehicles and cars and everybody driving on it, you're not really going to get a finished edge in that lawn until you put the finished paving in. You'll probably find the same thing happening on the north side. We do not want to wait as long on the north side as what we have on the south side because I think the planning board has taken a very strong stand in the construction management plan where uh, Pulte's not going to have sort of free use of driving the entire length of this road. There's going to be strategic locations where they can cross the road and then everything's going to be off the road. So there's no reason why we can't pave the north road and complete all that landscaping much sooner. I, I would say within a year or less than the south side. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, just, no, just a couple good of, questions. Yeah, Keep going. Just a couple of notes. I mean, I'm not confident that even with the paving that you're going to be able to keep the salt and sand off. This is New England. You've seen what they do on the main road. So, um, And I know that you guys have gone with a low impact, yeah, low impact approach, yes. which 
to me, I mean, it seems like, it seems the opposite, personally, in my opinion, because it's going to be you're not keeping the sand and salt on the road; it's it's running off to the sides and everything. But uh, just just a point I wanted to make, and sure. I'll, I'll take a look again. But I, I could have sworn that in Legacy North, just about all of it was just a couple of feet, and not very wide. But I'll take a good look again, Roy. Maybe I can walk it with you one yeah, one of these times. Anybody who wants to walk it, by the way, through the chairman, yeah. uh, I'd be more than happy to give a Saturday tour or some evening tour or whatever. We're we're, we're going to talk about sidewalk day okay, yep, I'm, very I'm, shortly with that because we all need to I get, the gun, get out there. That's okay. No, you're. Like I said, you guys, you, you guys are setting the pace right yeah, now, and it, and which is, is okay. The, the weird thing you'll find about me, just a little preface here, is I'll be more concerned with the functionality of safe people walking and the aesthetics of it, and a little less concerned with the housing, because I know you guys have done a great job with that, and other people have taken care of that. Thank you. And I would second that as well um, going forward, because um, I've, we've been hearing of people pedestrians getting hit and on bicycles and things of that nature and it's really um, a concern for both David and I I think that that be one of the primary things about about pedestrian and, and foot traffic and as well as the, 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 the um, aesthetics that go along with that okay. Uh, so continuing on kind of the design and site planning uh, aspects, I just wanted to show you the architecture for, for those of you who are just coming on board here. Uh, not sure how familiar you are with uh, the product type and, and what we're doing here architecturally, uh, but, but Pulte has uh, seven different models of single family home that they'll be building here. Uh, those are selected by the owner at the time of, of purchase, and they can be customized in, in any number of ways. So the garage doors vary from, uh, from this style to more of a uh, barn-style door, uh, different levels of, of glass and shutters, different, different siding materials uh, that all get um, incorporated into the, uh, the homeowner's selections. So we've provided... Um, we've provided some elevations of each of the unit types, uh, the simplexes, uh, the seven of those that we have, as well as the duplex units, the simple attached, we call them, uh, which we're just showing you kind of some of the variety that there will be uh, as part of those. Um, the simplexes and duplexes on our plan are grouped together. Uh, so we tend to have sub-neighborhoods of, of simplexes in a group and sub-neighborhoods of duplexes in a group. Uh, we haven't mixed them all up. We're, we're trying to create streets that have uh, a character that's unique unto itself but also consistent uh, and to have, have product type uh, near other similar product type. Um, so we've provided as part of our package and we've been through with the design review board all of our various uh, options for those units um, and these are, are the footprints you're looking at on the uh, the overall plans. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I don't remember uh, three-story uh, plans in place before. Are those like attic windows or is that a third story? There's, there's no, they're all two-story homes. There's no third story on any of the homes proposed. Oh, the attic so it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a fake dormer just for architectural Aesthetics. Just for some interest along that roof line. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And we've also provided plans showing kind of the, the various options and combinations for door styles and window styles and uh, siding treatments, uh, which which can be accommodated for uh, for the different units. So those will be intermixed throughout the neighborhoods. With the chair, yeah. I had read in one of your handouts that um, there would not be any two alike back to back or side by each um, or across from each other. How do you plan to make that happen? That's at part of the uh, sales process. Uh, if somebody wants a particular home and there's already one right there, they'll either have to select a different lot or they'll have to. 
uh, select a different home for the lot next door to the, the one that's already there. So we do that with color. We have a similar condition to that on the south side. And there's some that are close in look, but they are, if you look closely, they're, they are different. I think that was one of the things that was said back when I first started attending meetings was that we wanted that differentiation between the housing. So if we can stay close to that. Yep. And we, we did discuss that at length with the design review board as well. Uh, and, and what we ultimately came to uh, was that there are some controls we'll be able to put in uh, in terms of who gets what unit. Uh, but the other thing we've done is try to provide those neighborhood themes that also help to differentiate, you know, one section of homes from another section of homes through streetscape and furnishings and things that aren't architecture necessarily, but they'll help to create a distinct identity for those five different uh, groups of houses. So it's not one giant project; it's several, several, several smaller ones. Uh, so moving, moving down our kind of outline list, we wanted to talk a little bit about transportation and the trail network. Uh, I've brought our up-to-date trail exhibit uh, as part of the presentation tonight and just wanted to kind of walk through that a little bit. Um, the trail plan is consistent with the master plan special permit trail plan, which we've also brought with us that showed where various connections would be. This is the uh, the surrounding areas are in gray and the developed area was in yellow on this plan. So uh, all of these brown symbols at the perimeter are connections to surrounding trails. And you can see that on the new trail plan, uh, we are providing those connections. Uh, one thing that was discussed in several prior meetings was the need for some public parking to access these trailheads, uh, which we've, we've now provided. We've provided 20 spaces, uh, six of them here along Legacy Farm Road, six right here. So those are both at places where you can access a trail, and then another eight down here, uh, which is accessed off Wilson Street here. So that's 20 spaces. It would just be a simple gravel lot that you could pull into uh, and have access to the, the multitude of, of acres of, of trail network question for you, or maybe this is an action item more for Roy. When we start putting on the uh, LNG lanterns, etc., why don't you integrate it into one of these? I mean, obviously you can't put a lantern where you've got a bunch of trees or whatever. I, I'm not sure whether you've thought that through as to... I actually think the lanterns as you're coming up Wilson Street would give you nice sort of a pathway of light leading up to, you know, for instance, if coming in at dusk. Yep. I think when you park in that last area, there'll be some lighting there. Yeah. But protected but, with boulders. But I, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't think we, we intentionally want to rip out a lot of trees. I'm just trying to remember whether there's a nursery uh, Store. pathway right along the fence there. If I remember, there's something right there up is. there. You literally can drive a car from Wilson yep. Street right. all the way in. And, and, and your lanterns are located in that area? Yes, the entire lane. Okay. Actually, you want me to show you on that plane? I, I think I know where they are, but I just, from from the smaller one that we've been talking about, Roy, uh, it's... So, so this, this is, I mean, this is close <coughs> out here, right here. So the lanterns would be here, 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 and here. So you'll drive in, you'll park up in here, but there is a walking path around this whole perimeter, which you'll have the lanterns around the whole perimeter. You're going to feel like you're walking on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston. <laughs> Only with mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Same amount of restaurants? <laughs> Uh, so that's essentially the trail network, uh, the roadway network uh, in terms of transportation. Uh, I think we've been over a lot of it, but we are providing six entries into 
the project homes off of Legacy Farms Road North uh, that's consistent with the master plan special permit. Um, we are providing now cul-de-sacs, I mentioned, at the, the ends of our streets. Uh, and one thing we did to the road network that's new from the previous plan, there was a cul-de-sac here that terminated this roadway. And we actually, there was a suggestion brought up to try to tie that in uh, to the overall roadway network so that we didn't have a, a long cul-de-sac there. So we've actually made that connection now on the new plan. And that will continue along uh, to the future um, uh, active adult community of the road uh, at, that, at that intersection right there. Uh, we're going to provide a hammerhead at the end of Fifth Street here so that people coming up this road have a place to uh, turn around. That will just be a grass paver uh, hammerhead uh, to allow for that, that movement. Sure. Yep. I know this is really just the overview, not really a place for questions, but I do have a question about the roads. I brought it up back in March go, or April. Go ahead, and then we're going to kind of try to finish up in about another four or five minutes for tonight because we've got several other things left to How do. How many homes are in the Northwest Village? I counted on my small map. I got about 108. It could be yeah, off by a few. Oh, it's up here. Okay, 103. And then on what I think what is now called Road I in the North Club Village. North Club Village, okay. Is that? Yep, Road I, yes. Is that right here? Is that the one that. You're looking at, at this one? The eastern most of Oh, no, then maybe that's not it. I'm, t I'm talking about in the North Club Village. Oh, it's, I it's, see. It's right it's here. This yeah, is, is I. that I? Yep, that's I. Okay. This was L. Sorry. Yeah. And how many homes are there? Just in this section? Uh, leading up to Road H. Twenty-one. Am I counting? No, it's more than twenty-one. Well, up to here, it's about twenty-seven. I think. Yeah. But continue down, because my my whole point is. You're looking at about 103, and road eyes probably. I think with the um, other homes before you get to road age, you're looking at at least. You're looking at over 140 homes who are really only going to be exiting out of road I, entering and exiting out of road I. To go up down to road H and come out that way is not really a natural flow of traffic. If there were some kind of a blockage, um, well, two points really. If you have out of those 140 some odd homes, 80 people leaving at, during rush hour to go to work, it creates quite a backup. The second point is, if there was some kind of blockage in the northwest village, how do how do those people have access to get out of their homes out of the street onto Legacy Park? Okay. If, well, um, to answer your first question, we did we did recognize that comment when it came up, and we actually had um, the traffic engineer who worked on the overall master plan development uh, weigh in on that, uh, which I believe we have a, a memo from them, John. That, the that is there. correct. That was actually submitted as part of the, um, the material within the resubmission package. It's a memo from the, the, the master developer's traffic engineer. I, I saw that, and I had questions about that traffic study, too. Okay. Okay, well, we'll make sure we talk about that at our next time, mm -hmm. and uh, can, we'll kind of continue on. And It's unfortunate we're getting to the point where they're going to throw us out of here in another half an hour, and we've got two other things we've got to really get done tonight. Uh, so, uh, Jennifer, what what time can we continue to? Uh, June 13th at 8 o'clock. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to June 13th at 8, 8, 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, moved. Second. Moved and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone staying? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Any
Thank you for that overview. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What was your first name again? Mark. Mark. Are you, are you related to um, Paul? Paul Mastriani? I am not. <laughs> it, Should I be? It's been, no, it's been, well, maybe. I don't know. It's been a pressing question. <laughs> no, there's a ton of Mastrianis in Milford that I have no relationship with. Okay, All well, of my family next item we're going to bring up. Uh, we have a letter requesting Stop withdrawal the without prejudice <laughs> of Legacy Farms Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Master Plan Special Permit uh, Amendment. This is for the uh, 180 senior housing. Uh, entertain a motion to uh, request that withdrawal without prejudice and to waive the fees on the the re uh, on the resubmittal. So moved. Except the legal ad. Except for the legal ad. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Basically, we didn't get too far with that, folks, because of lack of people, et cetera. And, uh, but we'll be bringing that up shortly. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Good night, guys. Let's, uh, folks from Davenport here? What? Do you want me to add to schedule a site visit to the outline of legacy? Oh, let's let's talk about that right now. We can talk about scheduling. Site walk. I don't think this weekend, because it's Memorial Day weekend, is a good weekend. But how about the next weekend, either a Saturday on that Saturday? Sounds uh, good for me. Sure. Sounds right to me. Okay, so let's let's plan on like nine o'clock. Wear hiking shoes. Whatever that Saturday is, it not June fourth. June fourth. What time? Nine a.m. She said nine, right? Okay. Nine. Yeah. Will we meet? And we will meet. Um, we will meet at Legacy in Franklin. You can just tell Roy. Jen, Jen, Jen you'll you'll be yeah. able to send out a notice on that. Right? I'll send you guys. We'll get to you guys in a second. What was the date? June 4th. June 4th. <laughs> uh, for board members, the, the the road is complete. And if you go, don't just get yourself locked in, but you, you can drive the whole length of it. And if you move a couple traffic cones at Wilson, you can get out that way. And it's... Just Chairman, sorry, one quick moment. Excuse me. Do we have a bus to take everybody around? No, we're going to walk it. <laughs> so, it's a thank you. Bit, it's fine with me, but it's a little over a mile and a half. We need our exercise. Sure. Yeah. Good. I think what we got to do is meet down at uh, the Franklin Inn. Yep. We can walk up the hill. Yep. Much easier walking down the hill. Maybe we'll, we'll spot a few cars the other way. Perfect. We got a set of paddles and everything for and whatever you emergency. <laughs> My cardiologist <laughs> wants me to do that walk. Two fourth at nine eight. Yeah, I'll send you an email. I got a, a top of that. Can't make it a month delegate to the state uh, Democratic Convention. But I've been there plenty of times. I know. Okay. The location. I'm sure I'll take care of You guys need to see it. So. Yeah. You're trying to get out of the exercise? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be doing a lot of walking that day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay, let's, let's talk about uh, Davenport. Come on in. Okay. Uh, basically, Davenport is the uh, the kind of project right near the solar farm that we were yes. talking about earlier today. Oh, yeah. And uh, they've come in with a. Uh, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. They came in with some modifications to the landscaping plan. Uh, I believe Design Review has seen it. They're happy with it. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'll see if I can find it in my file here. Yeah, if you could, um, I'd like to take a hand out. It's this, right? Is it this? Yeah, yeah. Is that. Yes. Oh, uh, then I might have that. I might have that with me. Just one second. Here it is. So, and I'll look over here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, for the board members, uh, 
we met with these guys before that, uh, before they went to design review. Uh, we felt, I believe this is an administrative change and therefore doesn't need a continued public hearing. But uh, I will let the landscape architect kind of go through his uh, kind of the, the, the major changes and the features of this, and then maybe we can Great. hopefully see the improvement here in the next five minutes. Good evening. My name is Steve Cosmos. I'm the landscape architect, and I was hired to take another look at this uh, project. Um, <clears throat> the original plan that was done by Western Nurseries. Uh, well, at that time, I think the model was a little bit of a different layout. It was uh, so the plantings ended up being a little bit these heavier. Are, these on are the, what they look like to sew to you. I mean, they were, bring it up. So. They were heavy on the foundation plantings and kind of light on the streetscape. So <clears throat> we kind of flipped it. The um, the units really have very limited um, exposure in the front. There's a porch and a garage. So we're able to reduce the planting around the buildings um, and then put a lot more planting uh, into the community. And so one of the major changes was along the entry drive. Uh, to the left is a landscape business that's been existing there. And there's a pretty strong view through the wooded area, which is actually wetlands um, to that. So. That's heavily screened with um, evergreens and then some wetland plants and dogwoods and uh, winterberries. And then along the edge of the road are uh, street trees. There's pin oaks in this case on one side. And then the opposite side, the plan showed a you know linear sidewalk adjacent to the curb line. And so what I did was to curve that sidewalk in and then introduce a few birches on the inside just to kind of give it a little more meandering, pleasant uh, appearance, not like a bowling alley. And um, so then, <clears throat> so this area I think will look a lot nicer and screen that landscape area. And then within the uh, subdivision itself in the housing area, each unit gets a flowering tree or a Japanese maple or a small tree adjacent to their porch. And then the street gets uh, quite a few more street trees than were uh, previously proposed. Um, and then on the previous plan, there was uh, evergreens fully surrounding the detention basin. And what I did was to reduce that um, and just put evergreens adjacent to the ball fields. So the view from the ball fields is screened. And then um, we did put some shrubs around the fencing that's visible from the road so you won't look you know at the chain link fence around that detention basin um, and then there's just planting you know some screening from the units so that's sort of the essence of it in the uh, end of the cul-de-sac where it says rain garden that's actually a planting that's uh, proposed under the conservation commission's uh, plan so that's not on this plan any questions? I, do, I have one chair. Yep, go ahead. Um, the ball field, um, I, don't, I don't find the ball fields to be, you know, poison to the eye so much. And oh, it wasn't the ball fields. I was screening the detention basin for the ball field. I wasn't screening the ball field from the housing. I see. The ball field's fine. Yeah. I just thought from the ball field, you don't really want to see the detention, the detention basin. basin. Yeah, so that's all that was for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so uh, it's your, just along the detention basin. Your ratio for for evergreens versus trees. I, I'm I'm big on on tree um, stuff and indigenous trees versus evergreens. What do you what, what's your ratio? Uh, you mean deciduous? De deciduous. I'm um, sorry. I let's see. I can pull any book of my list here. I got a real list. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we got 22, 25, I would say that we got, I'm trying to do a quickie here, it's, yes. hard to, it's hard to break it out because I got it broken into different groups, but yeah. I would say it's probably, I'm not going to say equal, it's probably a little more deciduous than evergreen, I would say probably maybe 
two to one or something like that. I don't know. Two to one, a third ratio. <clears throat> yeah, of more deciduous than evergreen. the The whole site is fully enclosed by woods. Mm -hmm. So this whole site is like oaks, and um, so with the deciduous trees, I just tried to give them a little bit of color. I put in some maples, and then the evergreens are really only where we wanted to screen a view. Okay. Very right, much. Chairman, yeah, go ahead. Through you, one yeah. question, and this might not be appropriate because I'm late in the game. You guys may have already finalized this, um, but on the south side of your entrance road there, mm -hmm. and this is my own personal opinion. I haven't had a chance to talk to the board about this, but a green belt between the sidewalk and the street. It looks like the sidewalk is right on the street. So, uh, oh, have you given any thought to? Well, actually, the sidewalk. See where the three birch are? Yeah, that part is, is that good, part. but the rest of it. With, because it really drops off the okay, grade, and it's an existing wood line okay. there. So yeah. that's really the only reason. That's I would have pushed it right in. And and then that wall is existing out there, okay. that entry wall. Yep. So that's that, where That makes starts. sense. I just want to ask the question, because right. where we can, we want to, in my opinion, yeah. uh, the sidewalk's away from the street. I, I agree, and that's yep. why I even did that. But yep. That was that's sort of the best. The middle feature. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Yep, sure. go ahead. Uh, looks like unit six on the, um, I'm going to say it's the southerly side by the detention basin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there windows on that side? I mean, is there anything to block their view of the detention basin? There's, a, there's an updated view here. Is that, that no, no, cohesive? No, no, that's, that's, the old, that's the old plan. That's the old plan. Oh. That unit is is very close to the, uh, to the basin. To the basin. I mean, those trees were going to be like up, up on top, right up against the unit. So to your answer, uh, there are probably a few windows, but then you're not going to block anything from the second story anyway. Obviously, yeah, that's correct. A l these units aren't set up to have much yeah. visibility to each other, you know, from one to the next. So, is is there a way to curve that driveway a little bit and set that house over? They're already built. Yeah, yeah, they're already foundation, built. except they're for foundations, it. except for two and four, I think are all built. You nailed it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's in. And half of them are, well, a lot of them are occupied. They are. Several of yeah. them are, yeah. yeah. Most of them are sold. Yeah. Most of them are already occupied. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I Without think, landscaping. I heard from, I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> we're getting ready to gear up and, and, and do this landscaping. I, I've, I've, I've heard stat. from somebody that only one or two are left to be sold. That's uh, that's correct. Yeah, I think we have three. Yeah, okay. thanks. It was a, been a good, uh, wow. good, good, good response. Good, 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 good for you guys. Yeah. For you. Um, for the driveways, I noticed there's a gap there, and, and I saw it for, in person. What do you plan to put between there? Because it's like a one or yeah. two foot. I was going to do, um, well, we talked about doing a little bit of a lattice screen. I'm not sure if they're going to do that. Just a little fence panel at the garage that are attached to the building. And then I was going to do like um, Hamlin, not Hamlin, the um, some grass. The uh, which one is it that I used? Um, yeah, I think it's a challenge because it's such a narrow strip, right? Yeah, I was going to use the feather reed grass, the cow forester grass, which gets about this tall and it stays narrow and upright, and just to give some separation because in the winter there's nothing's going to survive that right. strip. Right. Right. Yeah. And then they were going to do some natural stone in there, some bigger rivers type stone, doesn't really break so it up that well, it though, doesn't right? look. Um, just like, I, I don't even think it's worth a grass strip in that, you know, just lawn, so. What about perhaps some type of uh, stone mark? Well, they were going to put in just some stone yeah. mulch. No, I mean actual stone work. It would just be another hard surface. I think they really want to have something a little bit softer, and hopefully... It would be something for the cars to hit as well. Right, the <laughs> plows, with, in the plows yeah. or whatever no, I else. Mean like yeah. a, like flat, a like a type. walkway flat type. Stone. Oh, yeah. Flat, flat stone. stone. It's a you know, at that point, they'd probably just pave it, yeah. Yeah. which I really tried to get them not to do, because he's like, should we just pave the whole thing? I'm like, I'd rather just have the strip and plant it. Yeah. So well, couldn't it be like little cobblestone? Little right. Like, like, but it's just more pavement. Even if it's cobblestone, sure. it'd be nice to have something that's soft. soft that's okay. a landscape. Uh, so, as yeah. much grass, even yeah. ornamental yeah. grass comes off. Entertain, right. because entertain it, it a motion to approve this administration. Administrative change. So moved. Yes. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And I also heard through the grapevine that you're working on the stone wall sign that some 
particularly former members of this board, but uh, they're coming out in June to put the uh, the road or whatever it was. It doesn't say lane under the, underneath yeah. the okay. Uh, the Davenport Road. Right. Good. Are they doing it on the existing sign, or are they replacing it? It's a stone wall, it's a space right? Yeah, it's a stone wall, and there's a piece of granite that's, you know, in, inserted into the wall. Um, and I don't know, the guy's coming out, I don't know if he's taking the whole piece out and and adding it. Um, I know it's getting... We're flipping it. Getting, yeah, flipping it. Okay. I know it's getting changed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good luck with that, guys. Sure. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Look forward to seeing what it looks like in the end. Yeah, talk about coming in after yep. the fact. Oh, yeah, not bad. Next, we've got uh, 42 Main Street. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Ed Tucker. I'm the contractor. Uh, on Greg's behalf. Yeah. He's out of town. Okay. We're, we're in a similar situation. Just trying to make it quick. Um, I understand that they may have a restaurant tenant. Well, also, prior to that, we noticed there's over a two-foot uh, gray, uh, change. gray change in 22 feet from the front door to the sidewalk. And we're realizing if there was a potential restaurant, it's really not a great terrace to have uh, uh, chairs and tables out there. Mm -hmm. So we could, And then a few potential tenants have talked about uh, adding walls to make it more unique to the restaurant. Uh, than having everyone else have it open. So why so don't you the, explain what changes you're making and then uh, the original which was approved had a little greenery bed where the sign was located mm -hmm. uh, just a corner uh, knee wall yeah. and then a retaining wall on the left side. So what we're proposing is keeping the same signage extending the retaining wall on the west side out to the property line, setting the same signage on top, and then returning back with the retaining wall in two steps. So now we'll have approximately seven inches of uh, grade change from the front door to the wall uh, to the step in the street. That uh, was not our handicap entrance, uh, so we're going to still maintain the handicap, which is over here on the Walcott side, mm -hmm. so the ramp stays the same, and we have the entrance here, whether it's a restaurant or still two individual tenants. Okay, so I think it's a relatively minor administrative change. And then also I've taken the green that we're cutting out from this bed and putting it in front of the new retaining walls. I think Design Review Board was very happy with the change. Yes, they actually preferred that. So, right. so we have a recommendation from them. We we'll obtain a motion to approve this administrative change as presented. So we'll second. We'll be seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you had to wait forever. No problem. Have a good night. You too. And Oh, about when are you going to get done? When, when's the building going to be done? Right, within a month. Within a month. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, we're, we're making a lot of progress. One of the things we haven't made a lot of progress on is John and myself and Jennifer and Elaine were supposed to review the peer review stuff. And quite frankly, I just let it sit for a little while, but I promised to get to it now that the crazy election season is over. And oh, every three-ish years, we decide whether we're going to renew the contract for Beta, who's our peer reviewer. Okay. Uh, uh, his name's Andrew? What? Andrew is his name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, we got, what, 10-ish? I think it was about 10. Yeah. And uh, we have a criteria that we're going to select them on, but uh, part of it is, uh, well, Beta's got one in here. The guy that left Beta's got one in here. A couple of people that used to be our peer reviewers are there. Um, so anyway, we we still have to sort through it. I think the plan was to try to get it to the point where we'll call these ten down to 
two or three in, or whatever seems to make the cut and then have them in here for an interview for the board members to to discuss where we're at and it's 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 a little bit hard having done it the last time or even the time before that I think because uh, it's there's a lot of a lot of apples and oranges to try to compare these these bits and you know it's but We'll, we'll get to we'll get there. Um, okay, board members comments reports for the new guys. This is where you guys can bring up almost anything you want. If you want to get something on the agenda to talk about, maybe we'll set some time, you know, to just talk about future planning and stuff like that. If there's an issue that, you know, is coming up, that's a good good spot. Uh, sometimes a liaison report if a member is also now a member of another committee by for we have like seats on CPC and open space committees uh, a few others and where we're at we also because Claire is off of design review board pretty soon her seat was a planning board member seat so if somebody would like to is interested in the plants and going through the design review and, and, and Design review looks at it for us, you know, you know, in another set of eyes, and they have architects on that board. They have a landscape thing. Jeff Doherty from Angels is, I think, chairman, and and uh, you know, so they kind of look at it a lot harder than we do. The design review board only has the power to recommend to us, and a lot of their recommendations is their ability to persuade the applicant to make changes where we in site plan review don't have the legal authority to say no regardless of what it is so in many ways they are our strong arm in, in or, or a, a group that and because they're talented they make constructive criticism mm -hmm. and it gets makes for better plans I think so it ends up being a lot of like working session type things too. We work cooperatively a lot. Right. And they review all sign applications. Like yeah. So that's what design review is. When they do we do or what, how often? Uh, they meet the third Tuesday of every month. And if and it's rare that they get called in for a special meeting, but uh, I, I remember a couple. Every year and it's never happened. Got it. Okay. So it, think about that as a another commitment uh, coming up. Uh, Let's see, correspondence. Do we have anything else? Oh, there's a couple of zoning boards. There's a couple of zoning things that were in the end of your packet that's just in there for your information so that you know what the Board of Appeals is doing. And are we talking at all about the master plan? Or is that we, we, we would have it on the agenda. We took it off the agenda today because that was Fran's section with Frank that is still left to be talked about. And so we wanted Fran and Frank to be able to present it to us. And then, then at that point, we're through it at one point. We still have to kind of go through after that presentation just to make sure that each of the sections is consistent with the other sections. And then we'll, we'll, t we'll kind of do that with comments maybe, and we'll have Jennifer or Elaine kind of put those, all the comments together. You know, it might be one of those where you you go through the word document. You don't have to do all the the English work, but just say consistent with this goal versus this goal. You know, the, you know what is, and then we'll let them put together maybe something consistent, and then we'll talk about it, and then we will the next Take suggestions. We'll, we'll have a, a master plan that. This board is ready to give to all the other town committees within the, within the. Uh, Would we be able to put in our input onto yeah. that master plan? Yeah. yeah, I gave you all. Copies. Yeah, we got a I, we got a copy of it. I'm just I'm just referencing. I'd like a couple things to be added to that that I've noticed. Okay, that's you know it's 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 it's, 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 it's in it's a draft at this particular mm -hmm. point, and so then then the process is we give it out to all the other town committees. For their input, yep. and we have a public hearing on it, where you know it's not a hearing in public. This is a public hearing. We'll probably have a special night maybe for it and just highlight just that. 
and we'll get that thing done hopefully this early this next year. You know, maybe early this fall, I think, but realistically. Yeah, be a good I mean, we've, and we'll set goals very shortly uh, for, for what the board wants to do, but we'll, we'll kind of do that. We've got a lot of stuff for Mr. McDowell and stuff going on. Um, he's anxious to get going. If you go through Legacy South, you can notice that there's very few places left to put foundations. Yeah, no. So I think that's... What's the um, percent occupied, you know, or sold? Well, I, as, as I see it, they're starting to put up houses right behind the retirement center off of Clinton Street, and there's very few units left kind of near so the, the treatment fast. plant. That, yeah, they're, I heard that the Pulte unit in Hopkinton is Pulte's best unit in all the Northeast. Everybody's getting sales bonuses. <laughs> I, I suspect. I, I suspect. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. We're out of here before eleven. Or I mean ten. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I am. Want to start us an hour earlier at six, and want to end us an hour late tonight? Something. Yeah. Clear letter. Yeah, I'm not sure. It. it uh, you know, it. We we might for. For Pulte, just to try to get it done, maybe have a special meeting. But during the summertime, I try to like hell not to do that personally. I mean, it's but they haven't got everything in. Seems like they're in pretty good shape, right? They're they're getting there. It's a lot. Well, we've gone through many months with them. Oh, I'm sure you have. Yeah, it's, yeah, they have all there, there's a lot a lot of a lot of lesson learns have to be codified because. I won't say we don't trust them, but on the south side, they lost a lot of trust. So, like this, well, I shouldn't talk much more about it. We're, we're not can, in can I ask you a question sure. related to that? The um, low impact. Yes. Who, whose suggestion was that? Basically, the Commonwealth has almost been putting that on that, and some of your comments are are about the same as mine. Yeah. I, I did, it took me a long while to get comfortable with low impact development. It's, it's nationwide. It's I'm still not comfortable with it. It's, it's really tough because all the sides of the roads they road. Yeah. You know, when you look at on Legacy South, it, it just, to me, it's, it, it's I don't, I, it doesn't, you're right, it doesn't look as finished, but I don't know. I, I'm a to dinosaur. Me it seems too. like a cheap way of not putting in the infrastructure for the drainage. And these rain gardens, Lord knows if they keep, keep be maintained and whether they work right. as good as they are. I, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll be open minded, though, right? <laughs> well, right, until the you. next fad comes along, yeah. that's what the, what the Commonwealth is doing. Yeah. I wonder if they sold that okay. unit six. Next the potential farm down they said they sold almost all of them. They never mentioned they sold that particular unit. I, I don't think they've sold the two there. I don't know. They said all but three, but yeah, it's, yeah, and they're going for good money too. Anyway, okay. Look for a motion to uh, adjourn. A motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All those that want to stay. Discussion. Oh. <laughs> I just want to say welcome to the three new guys. And, yep. uh, thank yep. you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, thank you for going easy on us. Yes. 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 Okay. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Anyone wants to stay? Yes, You're by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Reading adjourned. Do we all